from what I'm seeing. Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. We're coming to you from the NSE trading floor here in Westlands. This week on the program, we feature a darling in corporate Kenya, and that is Dr. Julius Kipnetich, who has been holding different positions across various corporate organizations. And right now, he's the Chief Executive Officer of Jubilee Holdings. We'll be discussing matters insurance, but really, who is Dr. Julius Kipnetich? Let's take a look at his profile. Dr. Julius Kipngetich is the Regional Chief Executive Officer for Jubilee Holdings, which is the parent company of 13 companies. He leads the regional operations of Jubilee Insurance in the five countries it operates in, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi and Mauritius. In addition, Jubilee Holdings has several associate companies, PDM Holdings Limited, IPS Cable Systems Limited, Farmers Choice Holdings Limited, IPS Power Investments Limited and Bujagali Holdings Power Company. Dr. Kipngetich is the immediate former Chief Executive Officer of Uchumi Supermarkets Limited with extensive knowledge and experience in strategy and management. He previously served as the Chief Operating Officer of Equity Group Holdings Limited. Dr. Kipngetich has also had an illustrious career as the Director and CEO of the Kenya Wildlife Service, KWS, where he has been credited for a complete turnaround of the organization. It was during his tenure that KWS recorded tremendous growth and was listed as one of the top five most respected parastatals in East Africa. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Julius Kipnetich. Welcome on the program. Thank you. Well, uh, you've served in different capacities in the country. And of course, uh, just before we get more about uh, what you are into right now, uh, perhaps just how do you manage all this? Abhi, management principles are the same uh -huh. uh, across the board. At the university when I was teaching, I used to teach a course called Systems Theory Analysis and Design. Mm -hmm. And the theory of the general systems theory has certain universal management principles which I use in all organizations. So whether it is an insurance company mm -hmm. or a retail organization or a wildlife agency, the management principles are the same. And if you apply it across, uh, the outcome will be... So even I can run a church very All successfully. Right. All right. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Uh, such an honor to have you on the program. Thank you. And uh, of course, uh, you've raised a very fundamental issue around the management principles. Yes. And uh, over and above that, now you're in the insurance industry. Yes. We've seen uh, a sector that has a lot of promise still uh, scratching the surface for many organizations. Uh, you reported a 17% jump in your profit after tax. And uh, looking at the opportunities in the Kenyan economy for insurance uh, as a company, how are you aligning yourself to increase penetration? Uh, Abi, the insurance industry is at a very important junction in its life. Uh, as, a f as a financial industry, it delayed in changing itself to changing circumstances in the industry. The banking industry, for example, changed much earlier. Mm -hmm. Probably even I can say they are 10, 15 years ahead in the change. The insurance industry is reaching that junction now where it must change or it will be disrupted. So we in Jubilee are adjusting ourselves internally first for the storm that is coming that right. the industry itself would adjust. And that is why you are saying the insurance penetration in Kenya is pretty low. That I agree. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, at the penetration of 2.7, our cousins, the banks, are hovering in 60%. If you include M-Pesa, it's at 80. Oh, yes. And if you go down uh, to our neighbor, South Africa, yes. penetration of insurance is at 15%. Yes. So, in fact, actually, it's moved to, to us to 20%. So wow. There's a lot of work that we need to do as an insurance industry and we are reflecting on three large, largely three things. Mm -hmm. One, is our business model really geared towards the public out there? Yes. The disruptors like Equity adjusted their business model to fit 
So when other banks were closing branches, they were moving in, mm. but they were moving in with the right model. Sure. The second one is, do we have the right products? That's and a big area. Yes. Indeed. So the, the insurance industry must reflect and say, are the insurance products tweaked to fit the market? Or are we production driven rather than market driven? It's, a, it's an important question and we are reflecting on it as Jubilee. And I'm sure other companies are doing the same mm -hmm. so that then we can increase uptake of insurance product. In, insurance products is basically a saving. So why aren't Kenyans saving is because we are not communicating to them mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the savings product and structure them to fit what they want. That's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the third one is about process. Now, our, are our business processes geared towards attracting the customers we want? Sometimes it's a case of round holes and square pegs. That's true. So there's a misfit somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the essence of any disruption of a business is to relook at your model, relook at your products, relook at your processes, and adjust them to fit the market. And once you do that, you will see just the business uptake because then the market will receive it because you are demand driven mm -hmm. rather than production driven. That's a paradigm shift of sorts. Yes. And uh, Dr. as much as uh, the insurance industry is uh, yet to be where I would like to see it, uh, of course, uh, as, a, as a company, uh, what are some of the partnerships you are looking at in terms of deepening penetration? At the end of the day, it's about uh, having a sustainable plan where you'll be able to reach that Mamamboga in yes. Gikomba, you'll be able to reach that mechanic in Ngara, you'll be able to reach that university student. I agree with you, Abi, on, on that front. We must reach out to the public as quickly as possible. And the best strategy is through organized groups. Mm -hmm. What the tech is called blockchain. Now, organized groups <coughs> are the easiest to attract. For example, if you have a telco, with say 10 million subscribers. That is a, a database that's already verified and we can offer insurance product to that defined database, that's that true. defined group of people. Mm -hmm. So we need to engage organized groups. We need to engage partners who attract numbers and we can then now offer insurance products as a value add. And uh, looking at the bigger picture, Daktari, um, as much as uh, you're trying to tap into technology, uh, at the end of the day, it is an expense. Yes. Because you might have to downsize uh, or you might have to redeploy, depending on uh, the business model and uh, the dynamism that uh, you are facing in the economy. Just talk to us about um, how crucial will it be in uh, leapfrogging the sector to the next dimension? where we are likely to see a full growth of the insurance industry, which has been uh, experiencing good numbers, but still not yet there. I agree that uh, the insurance industry has to look at technology platforms. Everybody does. So we are not an exception. What we must focus on is how to harness that technology to fit the business solutions that you want to give the members of the public. Mm -hmm. So insurance as an industry has been slow in its technology uptake. <coughs> a lot of things are still very manual. A lot of processes have not been re-engineered to fit the situation. Mm. But that will not be for too long. The insurance industry will transition very fast. We in Jubilee are making that transition very quickly. We have now installed all the relevant core systems and the ERPs are also uh, been installed. So if you look at Jubilee of today, it is technology ready. We are now going to adjust our processes so that then we can now transition to the next stage. And I'm sure every company uh, will do the same. All right. Yes. And uh, let's now talk about the numbers, Dr. Yes. Um, as much as uh, you've reported a jump in your profits, yes. um, perhaps what drove this growth from uh, the gross premiums of the company and uh, what are your projections into the next financial year? Um, if you look at the, the top line for Jubilee, it's more or less flat. And uh, the first half of this year has been very difficult. We were suffering from the effects of 
the post-election stress, uh, which went spilled over to the first quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> post then the handshake of March 9th, the country cooled down, but it took a while for it to recover. Sure. We are seeing July is picking up and uh, we expect to end the year very strong. So we expect some marginal growth in revenues. A lot of the results of for Jubilee came from when we saw that coming, we then tightened our controls and verification. As you are aware, the insurance industry has huge problems to do with fraud yes. and, and uh, theft. So we have been very, very strong on that front. We have built our skills and capacity to process claims and ensure that these claims are genuine. And I want to assure the public we always honor genuine claims. But if we find that a claim is fraudulent, we will make sure it doesn't pass through our net. So Jubilee has been very, very strong in making sure that we have strong controls in the claims management process so that then we paid only those claims. So as a result, our cost control has been excellent. Mm -hmm. And even when the gross return premium has been flat, then our gross profit has risen by 17%. We expect to end the year strongly, uh, hopefully by more than 20% over last year. And going into 2019, we expect a growth rate of 20%. Dr. Ray, we have the various uh, issues happening in the country. This, mm -hmm. of course, from a regulatory perspective, uh, the new requirements that uh, uh, the asset basis that uh, insurance companies should have, as well as the time it takes to clear claims uh, of course, uh, this being uh, fronted by the Insurance Regulatory Authority, mm -hmm. how will this impact your business in an era where we have consumers who are very impatient? I g we will always work the journey with the regulator. The regulator is introducing new measures to make sure that uh, claims are processed more efficiently and, uh, and we support uh, the regulator on that account. Jubilee is ready. We are very strong financially. And I want to assure the public uh, that Jubilee will honor the claims as they fall due. Because our financial strength is the strongest in the industry. So if any time you insure with Jubilee and you have a claim, I can assure you it will be paid and it will be paid very fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jubilee is quite strong on that account and we support the regulator. When it comes to then the capital base, Yes, some companies are experiencing stress and we are transitioning to risk-based capital. So s many companies will be forced to recapitalize. That's, will this that's uh, see Jubilee maybe merging with some other smaller companies? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not merger, maybe acquisition. Acquisition. Yes. Any in the pipeline? Not now. All right. But we are always looking. Okay. okay. Jubilee is always looking for companies it could uh, take. But in the medium term, I see consolidation. Mm. When risk-based capital kicks in, the insurance industry will consolidate. So that then people then match the operations to enjoy economies of scale mm -hmm. and also improve their capital. So I see that happening and uh, Jubilee will be looking. All right. Yes. And uh, just uh, your closing thoughts. Uh, of course, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, product uptake. And where are you seeing growth coming from? Especially, are we seeing more of young people taking insurance for simple things like uh, their computers, their phones? Is this a niche that uh, perhaps as a company you will be tapping into as well as a program, I understand you're planning on mother yes. to child. Uh, just in brief, walk us through that. Okay. Uh, the insurance industry will grow in all fronts. Because as you, as you said earlier on, you, uh, the penetration by insurance is only 2.7. So we are starting from a very low base. Mm. So I see growth in all, all sectors. General will, will continue to grow, uh, especially in areas around home insurance. Okay, when this government program of uh, affordable housing, you know, we want to ride with it and tell people it's important to insure the contents of your home. Because if you are buying this valuable asset, for heaven's sake, please ensure it. So 
we look forward to growth in the general insurance. The other one which will also grow is medical insurance. The government is talking about universal health care and re reducing the cost. So medical insurance will grow, especially on individual. People will now come rather than being sponsored by their employer. The other one, of course, I see are uh, the life products. The savings products, it's important as a country that we save. Mm. Our aspirational target under Vision 2030 is we save 30% of our income. That's the aspirational target. The latest figures from Central Bank is we are at 10%. Mm. So we still have an incredible headroom to, to begin the saving. I know where we are now is a difficult economic situation where especially the middle class and the lower middle class are really stressed uh, on that. But what we would urge is that going forward, let's look at how we can increase our savings. And what better way to increase your savings than taking all these life insurance products, okay. education for your child. Please look at it. your pension. Can you increase your pension? You, are, you sacrifice consumption now for, for uh, future uh, saving. So there's a lot of adjustment that needs to happen. We also need to educate the public on insurance. There's a lot of myth and confusion in the insurance industry. And we as Jubilee, we have taken it upon ourselves. We are going to educate. And that's where the Jubilee Moms Club comes in. It's about educating and empowering Kenyan women when it comes to making health choices. One of those health choices is, for example, cesarean. Mm -hmm. The statistics we have as Jubilee is 50% of the women undergo cesarean cut. Now, this is unusual because the world average is 23. Wow. So our, our women are not unique. 37% more. Yes. So why is it that uh, Kenyan women are cut more than anywhere else in the world? It's largely about education and the, the relationship between the doctor and the patient. So we want to empower the mom to be able to make choices and say, I will not elect to go for cesarean because it has certain risks. And I'm not too posh to push, as they say. Mm. So it's important that we educate the mother. Because remember what people always say, you educate a woman, you educate a home. You educate a man, you educate an individual. <laughs> so that's the principle we are using as Jubilee. Uh, so Jubilee Moms Club, I want to ask women out there, please join Jubilee Moms Club. All right. And we empower you in making the right decisions for yourself and for the home. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Ari. Thank you. Always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you. And uh, great insights there from the insurance sector. And of course, we could not exhaust everything because of time. And uh, thank you so much for coming on board. Well, that has been Dr. Julius Kipnetich, the Group Chief Executive Officer of Jubilee Insurance. And uh, he's casting uh, his net wider when it comes to growing the industry, as well as deepening penetration with a lot of optimism for the industry. For now, let's take a quick look at our markets analysis for this week. What we have come to observe in the market is that most counters have actually been on the decline, and more so the counters which are actually um, heavily traded. We have seen a lot of decline even on the banking sector.